Well, we are off. It is the uh, 15th today, or was the 16th of May. It is about uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're on a ride vlog at my parents' house. And the vlogs have sort of fallen off for, t for yesterday and today, for Friday and about up until today. There's stuff I want to say, but and I am going to say in the ride vlog, but it's not going to end up. It will end up later on in the um, in the uh, in the other vlog because there's two vlogs now. Uh, so there's nothing on the. Uh, uh, it's our, uh, our life as Cyborg Alpha. That uh, and it's all, you can also check over here because it could be over here as well. I got to talk about both things or from two different perspectives. Sometimes uh, when you say something once and you go over it a second time, you change things in terms of how you want to present things or how you understand it, and so you can sort of see the difference between the two different. Uh, views and perspectives. And again, a lot of it has to do with uh, Lionel LeBron of Lionel Nation. And he never go, he, I've, I've been watching it for a long time. He doesn't change. But again, how, how, how does someone actually begin to change when they feel there's no necessity to change? And that sort of well, becomes the question is that, you know, why even listen to him? And the thing is, it's kind of like talking about any conspiracy theorist. It doesn't mean that all the ideas he presents or all the information that he presents is incorrect. It's just the conclusions that he comes to and the manner in which he presents it. And I think there are issues on both sides of the aisle. So you're not looking at one side or the other. He says he's an independent, but you see that he's got, he's got leanings in various different directions. Uh, some of which are contradictory. And he doesn't necessarily see the, or understand that the contradictory, uh, the contradictory positions cause significant problems. Because he does contradict himself. And he refuses to admit when he's wrong. He won't go back and correct things. Sometimes he just drops it and moves on. But again, he's still one of those people who is a lecturer. He tells people what they should be thinking. A lecturer or a teacher is a person who believes they have the authority to teach and that they're going to that they're going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. This is the nature of a lecturer, this is the nature of the teacher, and you never ever correct a teacher. The teacher is always right, the lecturer is always right, and that's their perspective, and this is how they see things. But it becomes a problem if you're a researcher, you're a scientist, you're supposed to be open-minded, you're supposed to sort of explore things, explore ideas. Then what ends up happening is that the positions held by the lecturer or the teacher are actually contradictory and become an impediment. They become a means of restricting thought. They, they, they close your mind off to things that you need to consider. So watch you guys see Make sure it doesn't jut out. They were alright. Because, see what happens, if you take the position of authority, then you're going to determine from your own perspective, your own mind, that something is right or wrong. 
or the information is not worth anything. Well, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes something seemingly ins insignificant can be very, in, in a later context, can be very significant. But yet if we sort of take the position that we are in authority and dismiss things offhand, we may be dismissing something that's extremely important. That guy didn't cross properly. You have to watch out for the uh, while, we're while we're talking. We have to always talk about, always worry about the uh, uh, about the traffic as well. The traffic has to be a concern. So what happens is that he doesn't consider things that he should consider. He takes his own position and then, then he sticks by it. Well, okay, yeah, that's what a lawyer will do. A lawyer will take a position, have a conviction, and then stick by it no matter what. I had to adjust my mirrors. So you can expect a lawyer to do that. So while he is a good source, in many cases because of his placement in society, there are still cautions that are needed when watching uh, his uh, or, 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 or when watching his presentation or using him as a source. And this is true for any source. You have to have caution. You have to sort of consider that the person, even if you like the information, that the person may be wrong. He may knowingly be wrong and saying the wrong thing and being false, but he at the same time, he may also be uh, wrong in, uh, you know, not knowing it. He doesn't, he doesn't know, not really know that he's wrong. So he doesn't know it, he's not, so he's not hiding. So he, could be, he could be hiding, he could be, for his own particular reasons, hiding information or promoting certain information. things that have to sort of be considered. And that's why the research observation takes so long. Because there are so many different things to consider, and because the information isn't always front and present, you have to sort of take a different tack, a different approach to information as you bring it in, and particularly if it's observation. A lot of words, in other words, a lot of your information. Lines up along with healthcare. It's constant. Your knowledge is constant. And you have to have enough to sum up. But even when you have enough to sum up and, and, and create a larger group in the knowledge, because knowledge is just something that's not a part of it, it's infinite and infinite, you always want to get this simply the approximate. So you're never going to be an expert, you're never going to be. The, the, the guru and sort of having absolute knowledge. What you will have is you'll have is a larger group of knowledge. In other words, your package of knowledge will be larger than somebody else's. Right? Your experience will be longer than somebody else's. And that's where the difference is coming. It's, 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 it's not in the measure of absolute, it's a measure in terms of the size, size of the bundle of knowledge that you have.
Well, it seems we have a bit of looking up to do uh, regarding the Barchester Chronicles. But, <laughs> surprisingly, even though it's based on a book from the 1800s, uh, much like I talk about Dostoevsky, who was from the 1800s as well. And yet, the topics are pretty much the same. The abuse of authority, the attitudes of the intellectuals at that period, who assumed that there was nothing that there was beyond them, that their integrity was the highest, and therefore could not be questioned. This was an assumption held by many. I think it's kind of the, it was the attitude of the Victorians that sort of brings this into, into life. But it wasn't simply the Victorians. This attitude is, 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 was thoroughly throughout society in terms of people stationed in position. The more of an intellectual that you were, the more power that you had, and you sort of used this to cement and make sure that your understanding was primary and could not be questioned. And in many cases, should not be questioned. And they would follow these convictions until somebody died. This was the, this was the whole concept of chivalry. Was you're going to die for your sense of self. Not because you're defending yourself, but you're defending your honor. And now you're in a duel for, for death, a duel to the death, and you kill in the name of your honor. Whoever survives the duel, in the context of chivalry, was correct. And everyone, well, most people, assume that these positions, these convictions of feeling, the righteousness of thought that they were having, in order to defend their righteousness to the death, that this was all from God. They couldn't see the devil and his tricks and his lies as he convinces these people that in order to maintain pomp in order to maintain, maintain circumstance they needed to die or kill one another to protect that sense of right that sense of feeling And this is throughout the structures of most religions, particularly at the top. Ironically, it's also in those who organize societies against the religions of theology, of God, who themselves have no God, but because of their behavior and beliefs, are as religious as those who have a God. So their theology, although it's not specifically a God, their theology, their religion, is a religion of atheology, of atheism.
or without God. But it's still nonetheless a religion. And they adhere to these tenets, whatever they may be, just as they would, just as stringently as any religion. So they are, in fact, religious. It's just simply not what other people would define as religion. But then again, there are a lot of different types of religions out there. And of course, a lot of different types of religious practices. The question is, in which direction do we go? We talk about theology, we talk about gnosis, the knowledge of beyond. The question now is, what direction? And for me, the choice was actually quite simple. It was the one with the best offer. And the one with the best offer is the Eastern, is the Eastern Christian path, offered by Christ, it's not offered to the West. It's not a Western thing, it's an Eastern thing. And it is a path of selflessness, of humility, not pride. And that, in, the, in this path, you are granted oneness with God, not the universe, as in the others, which have a path, but takes you to oneness with the universe, or simply to enlightenment. I'd rather be immortal, have eternal life, and be one with God. So that's my choice. And part of this choice, as I walk along the path, is to develop a relationship with God. What, uh, what options do I have in terms of relationship? Well, He offers kinship to be my father. That's not a bad deal. I like that. So that's the direction I go. And as amazing as I evolve in my path, in my journey, looking back at things that I used to do, things that I where I was before, I can now see my journey in almost every single TV show that I watch, even within the vlogs. question is, I guess for everyone else as well, where are you going? Where is your path in life? Where is it going to take you? To heaven? To hell? To nowhere? It's going to be interesting to see. Now, as Lionel says, and this is sort of the phrase of the frame of Lionel, that there is a character called Nigel Hawthorne of the Archdeacon in the Barchester Chronicles. He also plays uh, another character in Yes Minister and Yes Primary. He plays the uh, permanent secretaries. And these are the people who do the most damage because they are the shadow government in any bureaucracy. They're the ones who write up the laws, they're the ones who write up the bills, and sort of help the minister or whoever is going to be passing the bills to understand what's in them.
I guess I bumped my mirror without sort of realizing it and it's now down. So I can't see what's going on beside me. That's okay. There are more scooters out and around. Uh, and an altogether enjoyable ride. Tomorrow we will have our Fosca. We have Fosca for 50 days afterwards. And so rather than having it right after like when everyone is exhausted, we had it a couple weeks later. Uh, it gives the system a bit of a chance to sort of recover from all the food you've been eating. Uh, see, there is a shift when you're going from the fasting food to having meat again with a, a heavy protein. Uh, there's a bit of an adjustment in the system that's required, and so uh, the time gives us that. The, the sort of the Winding.